Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Karis Time, and it is time for another Brawl Talk. Already, I'm just as surprised as you guys are, and what's even cooler is how epic this update is looking. We've got two new game modes, an El Primo remodel, Piper's icon is fixed, three new skins, and let's not forget about two new game modes and a legendary brawler i have got a lot to dive into for this brawl talk guys and there was a ton of gameplay of the newest brawler sandy and i figured out most of his stat his stats i think so we'll go ahead and start off by revealing everything i discovered about sandy from the brawl talk video and then we'll jump into everything else by the way as usual you know i'm going to be doing sneak peek videos including an in-depth comparison of sandy to all the new brawlers and and you know so if you like that kind of thing, you could subscribe. If you don't like it, you can just hit that unlike button right now. I think it's called an, an unlike button, a dislike. Yeah. For starters, guys, San let's go with the obvious. Sandy has a 5.6 thousand HP at max health. We know that the gameplay is max because of the star power that is activated underneath Sandy. Now, for reference, 5.6 thousand HP is a bit more than Nita, Poco, and Mortis at 5.3 thousand health. And it's a bit less than 8-Bit and Pam at 6,000 health. Now guys, out of all of the brawlers, that makes Sandy the 10th tankiest brawler in the game, which isn't bad. For his attack, he throws out sand over an area that actually deals 1,260 damage to any brawler caught within the area. That is the same damage as Mortis, to give you guys an idea of how strong that is. This will make Sandy a real pain for low HP brawlers like Spike and Crow, who Sandy will be able to three shot whenever he gets within range of them. Now, as for that range, I did my absolute best to try and measure it out, but the angles were kind of weird where they actually fired from, and there weren't many great horizontal measurements. However, I did get a perfectly vertical measurement right here, and you might think that that was actually really helpful, it's not as helpful as you might think, and the reason why is because the way that the camera is angled, it's it's placed so that the distance actually shrinks the further you get from your brawler vertically. You don't need to worry about it. This is why I actually make all of my measurements horizontally for my Brawl Olympics videos. So, to confirm, I placed Frank in what I thought was the exact same spot and compared to the two. It's tricky to say if I got the exact scale right since the gameplay was likely recorded on a different device, but... I think that it's pretty close. Now where Frank has a six tile range, I think that Sandy's range is going to be one third tile longer or two thirds tile longer than, uh, than Frank's attack. Regardless, this would mean that Sandy's range is just as long as Nita's or it would be slightly longer and one third tile shorter than Poco's. I'll confirm this range later on and show you guys in another video, my, my uh, Sandy Olympics video. But either way, this does give you a very good idea of how effective Sandy will be at hitting his shots. And yes, Sandy is in fact a he brawler. I double checked and Danny confirmed it. Sandy's a male. Despite the feminine name, he is a man. The Sandman. Now as for Sandy's super, he throws down a sand storm over a massive area and any friendly brawler within that storm will go invisible, which is crazy. Now I pulled out the timer and measured how long his super lasts down to the frame and not only does it last as long as Leon's invisibility super, it almost lasts twice as long. If my measurements are correct, we're talking about 12 seconds of invisibility for your entire team. That is insane and there's no way it will last like that for long, guys. I can almost guarantee you it's going to get nerfed. That's, that's crazy as far as gameplay is concerned. Now we already know what Sandy's first star power is going to be. Basically, enemy brawlers that are also within that sandstorm will take a small amount of damage while they're in it. It looks like the amount is 200 damage, and based off of my timers, it happens every single second. Once again, I measure that down to the actual frame in the video clip. So, for 12 seconds, we're talking about 2.4 thousand damage, which, which isn't actually a whole lot, okay? Especially because my guess is the enemy brawlers are going to be fleeing the scene as soon as that sandstorm lands. They're not going to want to get caught off guard by invisible enemy brawlers 
or take that damage because they won't be able to hide in the bush during that time because the damage will be being dealt to them. Now, that does remind me, guys, 12 seconds of control on the field is over, over a really large area is going to be absolutely insane on Gem Grabber Siege. It's crazy. This is, it's insane. I can already tell you Sandy's gonna be OP, guys. Now there are a few other stats that I would like to talk about, okay? We've got one really solid clip of Sandy's reload speed. I measured it exactly to the frame of the clip and it came down to a 2.18 second for the, the reload speed. I've never seen a reload speed end at 0.08 before, so my guess is that Sandy's actual reload speed is going to be either 2.15 or 2.2 seconds. We're talking about the time, as a reminder, that it takes for Sandy to completely unload and reload an entire shot. For reference, Dynamite has that reload speed of 2.1 seconds, and Jenny, Jesse, Jesse, not Jenny, Jesse has a reload speed of 2.2 seconds. So we're pretty close to Sandy having a similar reload speed to Jesse's. And that would mean that Sandy has the 14th fastest reload speed in the game, which that's not anything super impressive. It's like right in the middle. Uh, so you might actually say that Sandy's reload speed is just just average. Now for the first time in I think forever since New Brawlers were released, I actually think that I was able to accurately measure this New Brawlers supercharge rate from Brawl Talk. In this clip, it looks an awful lot like the beginning of a match before any brawlers have dealt any damage. None of the brawlers have charged up their super, the safe is at full HP, plus Sandy is standing in a respawn location and there are footprints showing the exact path for Rico and Mortis as they walk from the spawn location into the bush. Either all three of them died and respawned at the exact same time or we're looking at the beginning of the match and Sandy has not charged up his super at all. And here you can see Sandy throw out three attacks, but two of them hit two brawlers before charging up Sandy's super. If I'm correct, and this is actually the beginning of the match, that means that Sandy will charge up an entire super with five attacks. To give you an idea of how impactful that is, Poco, Mortis, and Penny all charge their supers with five attacks against a single target. And Nita, who has a similar range and pattern similar to Sandy's super, or, or attack I mean, charges her super with seven attacks. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like Sandy's going to have his super pretty frequently um, given his medium range. And next, I wanted to touch on Sandy's movement speed. At first, I didn't notice because of the sporadic movements in the gameplay, but after paying really close attention, I actually think that Sandy has a faster than average movement speed. Now, this is surprising to me because Frank used to have the longest attack range for his movement speed, but it was stunted by him pausing to attack. I'll confirm this when I release my Sandy Olympics video, but I'm pretty sure that Sandy has the same movement speed as Frank and Rosa and outranges them without having any type of like stun or slowdown when he, when he attacks. In a way, you might even consider Sandy a medium range assassin with his invisibility super. Now, as for Sandy's second star power, I don't believe that it hit, was hinted anywhere in the gameplay, but I do have some cool ideas that I would love to see put into the game. I would love to see a slight movement speed nerf to enemies caught within the sandstorm. Again, I get slowed a little bit, making it easier for targets to, to get rid of them. Nothing very extreme like spike super, just enough so that like Anita could catch up to a fast moving crow. Additionally, I think it would be super cool if it increased the reload speed of friendly brawlers inside the storm, kind of like Piper's snappy sniping. I mean, it's already an OP super, let's just make it more OP, guys. Now these were just a couple of ideas for second star powers, and I would love to know what, you, what ideas you guys have for a second star power, because he's a really cool brawler. Okay, now we have covered Sandy, it is time for us to talk about everything else coming in the update. Let's start off by talking about those two new game modes first, because that is what I'm most excited for. First off is Lone Star, which is a free-for-all bounty. I could be wrong, but all of the signs point toward a 10-man game with like, you know, it's a showdown map, and I feel like that's confirmed when they call it a free-for-all. Based off of this limited information, my guess is that there will be a 10-man bounty match where your bounty increases for every kill that you get, and so does your score. The more kills you rack up, the bigger a bounty you're worth, and the bigger target you're going to become. And also, you'll notice that this bounty star is actually in the middle of the map. We know that it's the middle of the map because of this big X which marks the center of every showdown map. And another thing you will notice, in the upper right hand corner, it actually switches from keep up the good work 
to you are in the lead once Brock kills the enemy Dynamite. We don't see any type of like a scoreboard to show which brawlers have the biggest bounty, but we do have these hints that will probably like hint toward how well you're doing. Also, it's important to note that we didn't see a single power cube or power cube points or numbers above brawlers' heads, suggesting that there aren't actually any power cubes in this mode, and that is going to be interesting for a 10-man game mode. Additionally, we did not see any showdown smoke, and we have no info on what happens when you die. My guess is that bounty stars will randomly pop up in certain places on the map for people to fight over instead of those, you know, power cube boxes. And then, if you die, you'll actually respawn in a safe spot so that you can continue to try and rack up the kills. Next up, we have another free-for-all mode that also seems to be taking place on a showdown-sized map, suggesting another 10-man solo mode. In this mode, the goal is to try and deal as much possible damage to the bot, the big bot in the center, and from the looks of it, we're talking about a lot of damage. In the clip, the bot was at 56% health and it had 168,000 HP left over. Using some quick math on my handy dandy TI-84 Silver Edition, <laughs> we find that that is a total of 300,000 health, which is the same amount of health as a hard boss in boss fight. We also see the you are in the lead message in the upper right hand corner as well as the countdown timer for the mode. We're roughly halfway through the bot's health and there's 3 minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock, which makes me wonder how this mode will work into the current reward system. Will the mode be worth trophies? Will it be worth double trophies like Siege was? Will it be worth something else? Will it be a ticketed event where your goal is to get tokens? Will it be a new way to earn star points? That's one thing I've been hoping for. I have no idea. I still have so many questions. But still, we have more answers here as well. We do see some power cubes in the match. In fact, Rosa had 37 before she died. And this means that this won't just be a fight to deal damage to the bot guys. It's also going to be a fight to kill other brawlers and take their power cubes so you can deal more damage to the bot and increase your own survivability. I'm really excited about this mode. I cannot wait to answer all these questions for you as soon as Supercell will let me. Please, Supercell, just let me do it. Now, if that's not enough, guys, there's still more to cover in this Brawl Talk, okay? El Primo is getting a remodel, and so are his El Rey and El Rudo skins. You might remember a while back when Golden Rico was upgraded to Loaded Rico, and his skin price went from 30 gems to 150 gems. There's no guarantee that that will happen with El Primo, but you seriously might want to consider making sure that you have both of these skins before the update so you don't miss out any, on any one-time awesome deals. Now, we've also got a couple of glimpses of gameplays for these skins. I analyzed every single frame of them, and I didn't see that the skins had any additional features or anything like that in-game. That doesn't mean that it won't happen. A lot of times the developer build that they use to film these Brawl Talks is actually rushed before the final touches are actually ready for the update, so that very well may change. Personally, I think that this remodel looks fantastic. I don't have any complaints about it, but then again, we don't know what his brawler icon is going to look like. I mean, we all remember what happened to Piper's icon. Speaking of which, Piper's getting a revamped icon. As soon as I saw how the community responded to the first one, I knew it was just a matter of time before they upgraded it, and this one looks a lot nicer. Now, Gene is getting a new skin. His first skin is Pirate Gene. It looks pretty epic. I'm kind of disappointed that his super wasn't replaced with a giant hook, but I guess it's better than not having a skin. That's right, Pam. I'm looking at you and, like, four other brawlers. Now, Sandy's coming out with a, a skin. Ready to go, Sleepy Sandy. As if he did not look sleepy enough. I guess adding pajamas made him even sleepier. But wait, check out those slippers. I need them. Ryan, Danny, Frank, anyone at Supercell, send me those slippers and I will love you forever. I need me some spike slippers, guys. Hashtag bring back the shop. Lastly for skins, we've got Red Wizard Barley who will be purchasable with star points. Now in this gameplay, it showed Barley throwing out regular bottles. My guess is that it will be replaced with flames in the final version, but that's just a guess. Maybe they'll keep the flames exclusive to regular Barley or regular wizard Barley. 
By the way, guys, my guess is that Red Wizard Barley is going to cost 2.5 thousand star points based off of how cool it looks. I mean, it looks awesome. And that Sleepy Sandy and Pirate Jean will both be 80 gems. That's just a theory. A brawl theory. Uh, sorry. That's not, not the right video. But I'll give you guys official numbers once I actually know. Summer Jessie now shoots giant balls of water at her, her enemies. Summer Jessie was already one of my favorite skins, but it, she just got so much better, guys. And Beach Brock now shoots shark rockets that trail water behind them. That is crazy cool. I guess it's it's better to update these summer skins late than never, right? I mean, I mean, summer just ended. I know that Supercell kind of missed it because they were all on vacation, but it, it's over. Unless Supercell's trying to send us a message, guys. You know what that is? It's summer forever. Lastly, guys, we have actual dates and a specific location for the world finals for Brawl Stars. It's going to be happening between November 14th and 17th in Busan, South Korea. Sorry for those of you guys that speak Korean. I probably just butchered butcher Bus Busan. Busan. Busan, Korea. There seriously seems like a ton of content coming in with the update, and I think it's just about time, guys. Supercell crushed it with an update so fast after summer, and now we're getting this amazing, amazing update after just a couple of weeks. I seriously can't believe it, and I can't wait. Once again, make sure you guys hit subscribe and that notification bell so you don't miss any sneak peeks if you want to see those sneak peeks. For now, this is Kyrostein ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.